Hey there, and thanks for watching. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I set up a brand new worksheet in a real estate financial model, including how I build out my date and period header and the general formatting that I use to make my worksheets as efficient and easy to follow as possible. So in this video, I'll be using the general format that we use when we do watch me build videos in that I'll be just creating a brand new worksheet for what would be call it a cash flow, a monthly cash flow tab of a real estate financial model. And in doing so, I'll show you uh, some of the tips for creating my date and period header. I'll show you the formatting that I generally use as well as a few other kind of tricks for speeding along the modeling process. So what I've done is I've opened up just a brand new worksheet. The first thing I always do is I take this very first column and I shrink it down to about two pixels wide. And I do that because I move around without a mouse for the most part and having this empty column in the far left allows me to quickly kind of navigate around my worksheet. So with that up, I then add just a general, call it title header. So I'll pick a color, let's pick, I don't know, a, a blue, and then I'll give this a title. For now, I'm just gonna call it a worksheet title, but this might be maybe uh, you know permanent debt or uh, operating cash flow or monthly cash flow or annual cash flow, or it might be a summary, tab, whatever it may be, that is some header. And in that, I'll have a title. And then over here, I'll generally have, so there's a worksheet title and then I'll also have call it the, maybe the model name. And this would be a title that would flow across each of the tabs in, in my worksheet if this is a multi-tab or multi-worksheet uh, model. So with a header up, I then would have, generally I then have my assumptions for this worksheet. And that's, that's the most common methodology that, that you'll see in the industry. Here I only have one assumption. And that's just because we're not gonna be modeling anything. Uh, the one assumption I have is analysis start date. And this is important because I'll be using this to build out my date header. So I, I, I enter a, a label analysis start. And then this start, I always start my, uh, or I have my analysis start assumption be simply month and year. And the reason I do that is my date headers always have the last day of the month as the month ending date. And so, and my time zero is the last day of the month of the month prior to the analysis start. So in order to do that, I'm going to adjust my formatting for my analysis start to simply say month dash year. So I hit control one, I tab into my category, I scroll around down to custom and I simply type MMM dash Y, 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 Y. And what that will do is it'll output a, uh, a value with uh, the month with three digits and the year with four. So you'll see then let's make this June 2021 and it gives us that formatting. Then, now the next thing I'll do is I'm gonna sh change this to a blue font cell. That means it's an input cell. There's a, an input requirement by the user and I have my assumptions. Now, if this were a cash flow tab, which I'm going to imagine it is, I'll have some header along the top here and then I'll have some labels along the side here. So let me drop in the labels. Now, uh, I'm just gonna copy and paste some labels in here. And these would be labels for kind of a typical um, kind of monthly uh, cash flow tab. This is the operating statement. This, these would be uh, operating cash flows, so revenue, uh, operating expenses arriving at, to an NOI, and then some capital expenditures netted out of the NOI to get me to a cash flow from operation. So kind of a typical income statement for, say, a multifamily deal. And what will happen is out here to the right of each of these line items, there'll be cash flows. And those cash flows are uh, related to a certain period. And so what I want is I want a header above this. Uh, and this header then will tell me what cash flow happens in, in what period and, and what date is assigned to that period. Now, I'm gonna build a unnecessary large, unnecessarily large header so that you can see a few of the tricks 
or are a few of the, the concepts that I will use from time to time in my header. So this header will include a year, a month, and those are both periods. Then it will have a year ending, and that's simply the year in which this period ends. And sometimes you'll use that, say, with a sum if, and you want to sum if some values that are in that year. Um, you can also do the same thing with your year period, but bear with me. And then the last one is a month ending, and that's an actual date. So it will be on this date, the month ends. So uh, this here will be time zero. And, and so let's say that this is going to be our year, and this will be our month, and this will be year ending, and this will be month ending with those lower two being dates and these upper two being periods. So the because this is a monthly cash flow statement, our primary period is month. So we'll go month zero and then month one and month two and so forth all the way out. And we'll go out, I don't know, in this case out to 12 periods. In a typical model, you would go out, actually let's do this one all that way out to 120. So we'll go out to 120 periods. You might go to 120 or maybe even to 132 if you're using a forward-looking 12 months to calculate a, say, a reversion value. Now, we can just simply leave it like this, right? And what we do is we add it, we do zero, and then we add a formula that goes, okay, the previous period plus one, and then we can copy this all the way out to 132, which we'll do in a minute. I like to actually add an in-cell label. And so rather than it just saying one, two, three, four, five, six, it will actually say month zero, month one, month two, month three. It's a little bit more eloquent. And as you get out to the far right and you're, you're past this label point, you'll see the label within the cell. To do that, we just hit control one, again, tab into our category, come down here to custom, and within quotation marks, type month, close quotation marks, space, Zero. Now the zero adds a numeric value at the end of the label, which the label is wrapped by the quotation marks. Hit enter. And now you'll see that this is actually a numeric value. Excel views, say, this value here in G7 as a number four, even though it has a label at the beginning, such that I can come up here and go that cell times 100, and it will return 400 because Excel ignores the label. Now, if I were just to simply type, uh, month four, and then I were to multiply that by 100, it will give an error. And that's because Excel does not view this cell as a value, but it does view this cell as a value, as a numeric value, I should say. So with that, I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go all the way out to month, or we're gonna do our best to come out here to about 132 periods. Let's see, where I'm 118. Where am I at now? 139. And you see how there's these little number signs. That means that the columns aren't big enough. So what I do, I select all of them and I hit Alt H O I. And that automatically adjusts the width of the column to match the size of the text that's in here. You can also just manually do that by selecting the columns and then double clicking like so. So for instance, we could go like this. You see how it's Number signs, that means there's not enough space to accommodate those. You just come up here, double click, and it fills out. Now, I need to delete these. So I just select those columns, hit delete. Now, the next thing I do before anything else, and this is a formatting trick, is right now I use, again, my keyboard to move around, and I use a control left arrow, right arrow, right? And, and that just moves me from one end of a range to another. However, if I do a right arrow, out into the never world out here at the far right where there's no more values it actually takes me to the end of all of the columns and there are tens of thousands of columns so this is way out here right and there's a few problems with with going out there number one is it slows you down number two if you accidentally leave or enter a value out there it'll actually enter all of the columns between uh, column A all the way out to where you left a value into memory and it'll slow your model way down. So what I like to do is I like to hide all of my unnecessary columns and rows. So what I do is I select the, the first column that I want to hide and then 
control shift right arrow, or you can manually select these by using your mouse. I select all columns out here. So if I come down and if I were to move over, you'll see there are tens of thousands of columns. And so I had selected all those columns, right? Once I select the column, I'm just gonna hide that. So I can use a keyboard shortcut control zero to hide those columns, or I can come up here, right click on any of the columns that are selected and choose hide. That will hide those columns. So now you'll see as I go back and forth, I don't end up out in the middle of nowhere. Now you may have seen these on some of our other models. You'll know now that these are hidden areas. If you wanna unhide them, you simply grab the very last column with your mouse and then pull out to the right. And what that does is that selects both this visible column, all the, un, uh, the hidden columns, you right click and go unhide and it will unhide those columns for you. I'll hit a control V to hide those. Actually, I guess I'm gonna have to hide those by, by the hand. Okay, so those are hidden. I'm gonna do the same thing for the rows. I'm gonna extend the size of that column there. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here. Now, what I do like personally, it's a personal preference, I like to leave some of these rows uh, unhidden. That gives me some space to add notes or to add additional labels, et cetera. So I'll come down here, I don't know, maybe I'll leave 50 rows visible, select 51, hit Control Shift down arrow, that selects all of the rows below row 50, and then hit Control 9, and Control 9 will hide all of those columns. Again, I can also use my mouse, right click on those, I'm sorry, those rows. I can right click on any other row and then hit hide. So now I've basically built a space a workspace that won't leave me out in the middle of nowhere as I'm moving around with my mouse. So I have my first uh, period row done, that's the month. Now, how do I do years? Well, what I do is I use a formula that basically calculates what year of the analysis am I in. And that formula is equals round up, the current period divided by 12, rounded, rounded to the nearest zero, close parentheses, and now I'll add a, a in cell label, hitting control one, tab in, come down to custom, year, add the zero so we get a numeric value. Copy this once to the right, actually copy this all the way out to the end, and you'll see now that's year one. Come out here, here's year two, and so forth, all the way out to year 11, right? And each year has 12 periods in it. So those are our uh, period headers, either month or year. You can do the same thing for quarters. You could do the same thing for days, uh, totally up to you. So next we have year ending. Before I can do the year ending, and this is simply the year in which this month is in, I'm going to do the month ending. Now, what is the month end for time zero. Well, time zero is the period prior to analysis start. And so in this case, we would go equals EO month. EO month is a function in Excel that returns the last date of the month that you call out. And it's, and it's the last date of the month that you call out, but then you have the option to move that a certain number of months forward or backward. So EO month at first asked me what date the start date is this analysis start. And then the question is, how many months forward or backward should we go? So if we hit zero, this would output the last day of June, 2021. If I do one, it will output the last day of one month following June or July, 2021. If I do minus one, which is what I'm gonna do here, it will output the last day of the month prior to June, 2021, hit enter. And now I'm gonna convert this. Right now, this is just a general format. So it's giving me just outputting a random uh, series of numbers. This number 44,347 actually equals uh, May 31st, 2021. Uh, I can convert this to, though to a date by going Control Shift uh, 3. And Control Shift 3 outputs a date format. This is the standard date format in Excel. In this case, May 31st. 2021. I then copy this one to the right. And the reason I copied it is I, I then I simply borrowed the formatting. And now I'm going to input a new EO month 
formula that takes the previous month or the previous date, I should say, and then goes forward one month. Close parentheses and we get June 2021. I'll just copy this all the way out to the right. And now I'm gonna select, I'll select these cells, hit Alt H zero, or I'm say, sorry, Alt H O I. And what that does is it expands the width of the column again so that we can see all of these dates. So now the dates are correct. They're simply one month following the previous month. And then the last is year ending. Now this is a concept that I don't use that often, but occasionally you wanna know what is the year ending for this period, all right? So it's not the current year, but it's the year ending. So for instance, year one ends in 2022, right? So it starts in 2021, but it actually ends in 2022. And occasionally this is a valuable thing to have. Now, the formula that we use is we're simply going to return the year. So we do equals year. And in Excel this year, all it does is it returns the year of a given date. So if I were to say, choose this date, close parentheses, it's gonna return 2021, right? It's the year of the, that date. Now in this case, we wanna return the year of the date at which this year, this analysis year ends. And to do that, I'm going to use an E date. And the E date function in Excel simply returns a date that's a certain number of months into the future or in the past. All right, so EO month gives you the last day of a month at a certain number of months into the future, into the past. This one just simply gives you a date, a certain number of months into the future, into the past. So if I were to enter a start date that was say June 15th, and then I went one month into the future, it would return July 15th, okay? Now this case, what I'll do is I'm going to grab the analysis start and hit F4 on that. So I'm always going to be drawing from the analysis start. And then I'm gonna go forward 11 months, close parentheses, and then I'm going to add the, the period year in which we're in, minus one. Close parentheses, actually I gotta close parentheses on the year, right? Like so hit enter, and then I convert this to a number. Now to do that, I want this to be a number without any um, comma. And so I do again custom, and I go one, two, three, four zeros. And the return, the output is 2021. So what this is saying is period zero ends in the year 2021. If I copy this one to the right, what you'll notice is it says period one, or I, I should say year one, ends in the year 2022. And you'll see as I copy this all the way out to the end of year one, it's always 2022. That's the year ending for this first for this period, all right? Um, as we move to year two, you'll see it goes to 2023. And so year two ends in 2023, year three, 2024, and so forth. I'll copy this all the way out to the right. And now it gives us the year ending for each of the year periods that we're dealing with. Year 10 is 2031, year nine is 2030, and so, and so forth. So that's the header. The last thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add a underline and my worksheet is set up and ready for me to move and model out the cash flows. Let me know if you have any questions about kind of setting up a basic worksheet in real estate financial modeling. Otherwise, thanks for your time.